Hello, everybody. What the heck is wrong with me? Okay, so, um, you're gonna hear me say um a lot, first of all, because this is my first time for voice recording for a video. But, uh, welcome to my channel. This is my drawing of self discovery. You'll see a lot of these. Anytime you see a drawing of myself, it is me trying to discover the beauty in myself, which I guess seems kind of corny, but it's the truth. Um, the picture that this drawing is based off of is, well, it's not based off of, it's an, almost an exact copy. Like, I tried to get it as close to the picture as I possibly could. Look at how fine that shit is. So cute. But, um, the picture is of me. It was an off guard picture, which can we thank God for those for a second? Like, for real. Uh, my friend Malik took it of me. I was dared to walk around with a bottle on my head, a bottle of water, because I talked frequently about how I took etiquette classes my mom made me take a couple of ed etiquette classes and so I was like I can sit up straight I just don't like to like I like to slouch it's more comfortable so you know I did and they're just like you can't you can't do walk with a bottle on your head and I was just like bet <laughs> so I did and I got so comfortable that I just kind of forgot it was there, honestly. And that was this picture. You know? So.
right here you can see me getting into the I guess the top of the outfit the outfit like I don't know why that was so hard for me to get across um and the picture actually doesn't go down this far so part of this sketch like at least on the bottom half I completely just made up made up off the cuff like it <laughs> I, and I don't know why I don't properly crop my pictures because I just end up making more work for myself but you know I don't <laughs> I don't properly crop them and I don't resize them properly so but I did enjoy drawing and uh, coloring the extra fabric like because I was challenging myself to which I've done in a in a couple of other videos that you might see on my channel I don't I don't believe that they're posted yet but if they're posted you'll probably hear about it in that video I'm trying to challenge myself to work with the different weights of fabrics and the lines that I use to draw them with you know because it helps to be versatile and to give some diversity to your drawings so it's not just one note and flat that's what I'm aiming to do at this point I'm also aiming to try and get my drawings to be a better likeness of the person that I'm actually drawing if that makes sense I'm probably complicating that sentence too much I'm trying to get better at drawing real people from observation only observation so with this drawing and with a couple of my recent drawings in particular I only drew from a little picture on my phone which I actually prefer I used to pull the picture into my canvas and draw that way but I found that I didn't really like it too much because I hated having to like drag to the picture drag the screen to toward the picture and then pull off I'm gonna uh, j hop away from that for a second and talk about what's going on on the screen right now which is the scar so alaikum. you probably know by now that I'm a Muslim but uh scarves are hard man scarves are really hard like the layering and like the folds Ugh. I I spent so much time and this is where I was talking about working with different fabrics I spent so much time just trying to figure out the layering of this scarf like I referenced my drawing multiple times and I deleted <laughs> deliberately did not draw some of those folds because I just could not be bothered and I numbered them like you see you saw the numbers earlier I had to number to see how many exactly how many layers of fabric I needed to achieve a certain opacity and that was what those numbers represented they helped a whole lot I do not recommend ever doing that it's probably a less complicated way of doing it but that was just how it worked in my mind you know like it helped you know it works talking about myself in that 
positive manner. <laughs> so here I, I know you can see up in the upper right corner that I have swatches. I took these, I studied the picture really, really closely because the picture was taken at, I was in college um, in the cafeteria and there are several lights everywhere that are like skylights and things like that that just shine differently on the skin so it, you know, obviously with melanated skin it just makes the skin look a different color than, you know, what it would be in like a house light. What are those yellow lights called? Tungsten bulbs? I have no idea. I studied that, I swear, but I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so I do highly recommend if you intend to draw at any point in time in your life to make swatches and not just, oh, this is a dark color, middle color, light color, not like that. That is what I did, but like later on you'll see that I pick, uh, vastly different um not tense shades of that brown that orangey brown so that I could define the face a little bit more because I wasn't getting that with the colors that I chose uh I also recommend having a color palette as you see it's about four colors in the top right the yellow the two pinks well the peach the pink and however you want to call it and that helped a whole lot if you're gonna draw something and especially if you're drawing from a picture try to pick out the most prominent colors in the color scheme and that will help you moving forward in your drawings because then you won't have to go around picking colors when you could have already had a pick I recommend doing color studies, which I had to learn how to do that, but I recommend doing color studies beforehand, before you even let a color touch the canvas, but I, like, like I said, this was drawn from a picture, so I knew exactly which colors I needed, and I could pick out the most prominent ones instead of, if I were to say, draw something, you know, from my imagination and have to create a color palette for it this is my this was much easier having the colors picked out for me but you know that no that's what comes with drawing from a picture versus drawing from your imagination
Here we are at the eyes. As you can see, I put a darker, not a bright white color for the eyes because eyes aren't bright white and they also take on the color of what is next to them. Sometimes. Don't quote me on that. Don't say that you heard that from me. Um, <laughs> I didn't do too much with the eyes because you in the picture you really couldn't see too much definition in the eyes as far as the pupil and the iris are concerned so this is as defined as those pupils get I did more work on the whites of the eyes than I did the pupils I'm, why is my voice so deep all of a sudden Jesus um in a little bit I'll get to the lips and I'll, oh here, I'm at the lips now. I take very special care with coloring lips because with darker skinned people, black people, you know, your lips are a lot of the times gonna be too, too toned. And I've always loved that fact about our lips. A lot of people find it weird they are ashamed of it like because some black people can have one brown lip and one pink lip or one brown lip and like one red lip not like bright right bright red but you get my point some black people can just have two brown lips some black people can have completely pink lips so whenever I am doing lips on a black person I take very special care in what colors I use. As you can see, there were a whole lot of colors. I was trying to figure out how to get that right. Like it was like a peachy kind of color because my lip in certain light is pink and then it's more peachy in other types of light. In this particular lighting setting, it was like a peachy color, like a bright peachy color. And then I have the brown around the edges of my bottom lip my lip isn't all the way pink like some other people's can be so just noting that if you do intend to draw a black person or a black character you know it's okay to have two-tone lips and please take special care when you're coloring them because it looks nice it looks more natural like I don't, I don't really want your stuff to look natural, but like you do, just, you know, take care. Thank you. 
probably saw on the other side of this cardigan it's like a little sweater cardigan i believe this was this picture was taken in the fall um i took a lot of care in coloring this little ribbed effect i really wanted that texture to be in there because i think texture is great like texture is freaking awesome but then here's the thing i took a little bit too much care and this took a little bit too much time because i sat and i defined the lights and the darks of this little ribbed effect that happens on the uh, sweater cardigan and when you zoom out you don't even see it like you can't even tell a difference but i had already done it on the other side so i decided it didn't make sense for me to do it on one side and not on the other so i just you know did it on the other side as well so that they would match because i i don't like things that don't match <laughs> unless i've purposely done it so that it doesn't match um i really like the way the sweater came out i don't know if it does well the skin is my favorite part but like i really the sweater is a very close contender i really like that little sweater thing i had going on it looked it was looking kind of realistic which was you know the point of it all i really wanted this picture to look as realistic as possible obviously you can still tell that it's a drawing i'm just starting out with drawing realistic pictures and i'm not that great at them but i try my best Okay, like in a few seconds, you'll see that I start on the earrings. I'll explain that once I get to it, but let me talk about the scarf. Layering the scarf was an issue, obviously, because I was trying to get the right opacity. I spoke about that earlier. However, even in layering the scarf, I still had to add, go back and add shading and lights and dark to that as well. I couldn't just let it be 
flat. You like oh, something in me wanted to, but I, I just couldn't let that be flat. Like I have to go back and add to it. Here I'm doing earrings. The earrings that I had were slightly transparent, just like the scarf. And I learned something with this drawing is that if you want something to look transparent, especially when it's against something else of a different color, just take a little bit of that color and color it in. Like it does wonders. Like, so there's a tip. If you're trying to make something look transparent, although this wasn't, this is, I didn't do a great job at this, but the point still stands. Take a little bit of the color from the back and put it over top of what you've already done. And it does a great job at making it look transparent. I hope you enjoy house monkeys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoy creating. And I hope you comment, like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.